Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Miller. Every week, I chat with fascinating people from all walks of life in order to bring you knowledge, inspiration, and insight. If you enjoy the show, you can support it by subscribing, leaving a review, and sharing it with a friend. This is the Jeremy Miller Podcast. Got the caffeine. I got the nicotine. Got the promethazine. <laughs> what is promethazine? I don't know. It's, it's like a painkiller like, or something? It's like a drug, yeah. Mm. Do you take caffeine every day? Are you like just zooted on caffeine all the time? Dude, I'm... I'm. All right, so I have... Uh, I actually found this out through blokes. No one knows this. Um, I have like hypothyroidism. Does that mean you're... Uh, it's not active. Yeah. So like, like it's super low. Uh, we did a blood draw. I should probably be medicated for it, but I'm just not going to do that. Um, so (laughs) outside of, and like I said, like I've never spoke about this to anyone outside of my mom and Amanda that know, um, I'm tired. It causes you like severe fatigue. Like I'm tired all the time. Like I, I take a nap every day because like just from lift, like, lifting running working like i'm fucking drained and i keep it like i keep it really low in moderation but like i'll do like 300 to 400 milligrams a day but i'll just like slowly sip on it through the day and i feel like that really helps me um 300 to 400 a day yeah that's it seems like a lot i know but (laughs) but here's the thing think about pre-workout if you take a scoop of pre-workout a day it's 300 to 350 so i'm trying i've laid off the pre-workout and just been like trying to like supplement with that but Excuse me. Um, I don't. I don't want to like be medicated, and 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 I know it's an issue, but I'm like, okay, they they re- they switch my smart subs, and we'll talk about blokes when we get into this too, because I I love talking about that. But like, they switch my start they smart subs to like you know try different things that are supposed to help, and and we'll see. But yeah, so I've been high. I've been I've been fighting this hypothyroidism. What does your thyroid do? I don't really know much about that. Is that like an immune system thing or? You know what the thyroid does? No, I'm not smart enough for this. It's it's off. <laughs> mine is yeah. mine is turned off. <laughs> Have you tried like no caffeine? Um, to see if it's like, is it just a crash you're getting? No. Have you ever fasted? Yeah, all the time, like every day. No, I'm talking like like 24, 48 hours. Not more than 24. You've done a 24 hour fast? Yeah. Because technically, I'm like like if I eat at 9 p.m. and then I eat at 9 p.m. the next day, I didn't really fast like. It, it, and and it has no benefits like like i don't think i mean it's in my personal opinion i'm like 24 like like okay so what like like you know how easy it would be for me to eat 4000 calories at 9 p.m. and then wait till to eat four more thousand at 9 p.m. the next night like like that would be so easy um i do want to talk about blokes though on this cuz i'm going to have to are we recording yeah yeah oh we're going is that okay yeah <laughs> fuck dude there's no intro or nothing no dude just rip it yeah um yeah, I do want to talk about blokes. Um, I owe them some content, some content, and I can't figure out how to put it out. So I need to, I need to grab a clip from this. Okay. And, and <laughs> give it to uh, what question can I ask you to make this organic? <laughs> uh, actually, you want to hear some crazy stuff? We can talk about my testosterone levels before. So okay, so we did a we did a blood draw before and a blood draw after Rocky. Twenty four hours before, twenty four hours after. You be you're going to be fucking mind blown by my testosterone levels. What was it? What do you think? What would your like like like, like what would your what would your overall guess be? You don't need to. Like, I can't tell me. if it's going to you know, be really high or really low. Because I'm guessing it's high. No, low. Okay, I'm was like in the hundreds, two hundreds. Uh, it dropped from I think like nine hundred and some points, or it was nine hundred, and we dropped into the low fours. So it dropped over five hundred points in forty eight hours from doing what? Running. What, what, sorry, back this up. Yep. What race was this? Rocky. Rocky. Okay, so just like a couple weeks ago. Yes. So, so there are there are studies out there that are talking about the Damn. ultra endurance athlete, and that's why, which none of these fucking athletes will tell you this because they're little pussies, <laughs> but that's why most of these endurance. Uh, God. Can I? I need to put a disclaimer on this episode. <laughs> Anybody listening? If you have young children uh, listening as well, you might want to cover their ears for this episode. Because Matt likes to use naughty words. <laughs> and if you're okay with naughty words, then continue listening. If not, just go to the next episode. <laughs> Have you listened to Huberman and Goggins? Uh, pieces of it. Clips okay, of it. so like the very beginning, Huberman says, <laughs> yeah. this is David Goggins. 
he is going to curse a lot. And that is okay for someone to do. If you don't like that, please do not listen. I mean, they're just words. Yeah. Just a combination yeah, I mean, of letters I mean, that we give meaning to. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, I mean, I'm just describing someone as a pussy. Like, I mean, that's probably not, that's not a very educated term to use, but. Yeah. Because, I mean, but... it's a, like, <laughs> it's a, it's a, you, I mean, you know what it is. And then it's. I mean, people know what you're referring to. Yeah. When you say that. They're a they, wimp. They know what you mean. Like, that doesn't sound cool, right? Yeah. If I'm like, all right, all right if I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm a rock star. Like, dude, I'm a fucking rock star. <laughs> Like there's there's there, there's difference there, right? Like like, dude, you're a stud. Dude, you're a fucking stud. <laughs> feels different. It feels different. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Like like I'm not I just, denying that. I just have this. And it, it asked my mother. She's like like she's like you went to basic training and you were this like innocent child like and not it was definitely was not but she was like you came back and you were this like vulgar <laughs> piece of shit <laughs> and she's like you've been tarnished ever since everybody that went into the army that i know came out just like that yeah like yeah cussing i mean it's, it's like I, the boys yeah, all the time yeah and like and you're just like you're it it's expression like yeah it's that's what it is is like it's just you know, p- people can say like like it's uneducated and it's, you know, like, yeah, there's a time and a place for it. But to me, like I use these words to express myself and and ooh, I don't give a shit what you think at all. But yeah, I, th- I mean, they're just words in my opinion. Yeah, say I mean, whatever, I mean, say whatever you want. yeah, just like what I said, I don't really care. I don't give a shit. <laughs> See, it just it just <laughs> adds like it adds it yeah. adds value <laughs> to the conversation. <clears throat> Well, um, am I allowed to put the hyper hypothyroid part in there? You said you never told anybody. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because I need to. I mean, anything that we're gonna talk about with blokes, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I would like to cut it at some point, whether whether it's off YouTube or whatever. But like, cut it and make it into a reel for myself to use for them. Because the thing was, is what we did is quickly, and we'll dive into it. I did a, like, I, we, I did the blood draw. And it was to like talk about like, because truly like I'm going to help them because I, I truly believe that like endurance runners, if you're not competing at an elite, at an elite level, you can become better if you supplement testosterone. If you, if, if you supplement testosterone through a clinical provider, TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, because what we were trying to prove is I had a 500 point drop over 80 miles. That's nuts. And so then like all these ultra runners are like, man, like I'm tired all the time. You know, I don't have an appetite. My sex drive is low. You know, I can't build muscle. Well, when you're running a hundred miles, so my next, once I release that, my next one's going to be, what's my testosterone, you know, running a 50 mile week and then taking it on Sunday or, you know, doing a blood draw Sunday, running a hundred miles and then doing another blood draw on Sunday. What's the drop over a hundred miles? And then that's going to show... Because supplementing testosterone the, the correct way is going to make – great. <laughs> great. It's going to make you healthier. Was the 900 uh, – was that on TRT? Was that like supplementing with testosterone? Um, I had not I, – I yes, but no. So I had not done an injection for two weeks. Mm. And I think that – don't quote me on this, but I think the half-life of TRT – or half-life of – of a synthetic testosterone injection is four days. So technically after eight days, it should be out of your system. And I just did, I did nothing for two weeks. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm open to, I'm open to talking. I'll talk about the, the anabolic use. I'll talk about mass strong. I'll, I'll talk about anything. I don't, let's talk about it. I, yeah. I mean, I don't like, I don't care. I did it. And, um, I talked about it on Justin Male. Have you heard of him? Uh-uh. Um, he's a huge podcaster here in Austin. Um, I talked about it on his, and I don't think that like he's a bodybuilder, and my I don't think that like people that resonated with him, like people follow you, like they're gonna li- like people are gonna listen to this podcast. But I feel like that one kind of might have gotten missed, and mm. that and I talked about it in there, and I had I was like, oh, like I'm ready for some heat, and it was crickets, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, where is everybody? Really, like, nobody yeah. nobody said anything. Like, no, 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 and I I talked about like. Which we'll talk, we can talk about test and mass because mass is a healing property. So those are the two that we'll talk about. But like I dabbled with NPP quickly, which is like a a bodybuilding 
anabolic fucking steroid. Where do you for... get all these? <laughs> can you say where you get these? Okay, maybe maybe don't answer that. <laughs> like, can you get these through? Um, uh, okay, like, yeah, a provider. Okay, or all, right, all right. So I'm not. I'm not. Um, <laughs> We can uh, that out actually, we actually, no, 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 I can. I can because he's open about it. Um, so Nate Blackwell is a coach for Tua. Um, and he's very open about his his steroid use. Um, he's a um he's a great guy. Uh he's a, a, a bodybuilder that's on steroids, which most bodybuilders are. Yeah. Some are not, but most are. Um, so I just consulted with him on like, hey, like I'm trying to heal this. Yeah, so so I get it through I get it through Nate, but dude, you can literally I shit you not, you could go on your computer right now and you could Google where do I buy steroids, <laughs> and there is a I swear to God there is a um there is a, a website called steroidify.com. I've heard, uh, I think you told me about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so what you do is you literally this is crazy. That's and the most like. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's easy, bro. So here's here, here's what you do. You go in, you go, and, and granted, like, take this with a grain of salt because you can get some bad shit as well. But you go in, you put it in your cart, you order it, and then they send you an email and they're like, hey, I don't know, which I don't even know if we should talk about that. I don't know. But like, they're I like, I mean, if it's on the internet. Yeah. They're I mean, like, they're like, hey, public internet. send a Zell to this email and say that it's for light bulbs. <laughs> Oh my so god. So the first time I ever did it, I'm like, okay, like here's three hundred fifty dollars for light bulbs. <laughs> then next thing you know, two weeks later it arrived at my door and I'm like, Well, were, were you afraid that it was like legit or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like 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 right off the bat I was like, Okay, like light bulbs, blah 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 blah. And you know like the buyer's remorse that comes like three hours later? I'm like, fuck. Like, 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 I, I kept, lose I bucks. kept, well, I kept checking my bank account. Cause I'm like, maybe they have access to my bank account now. And, and then like, yeah, within like two weeks, like it, it showed up my door and I'm like, really? No shit. Damn. Yeah. So uh, it's easy, bro. It's, it's so easy. Okay. Well, anybody looking for steroids out there, there, he's your guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder, I love that. Great. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my God. What a hot start to the podcast. I don't um, do that anymore. Dude, that's hilarious. So. My natural, I just got my blood work back like a week ago. My natural TRT, was, or not TRT, my natural <laughs> testosterone uh, it was in the 400s. Yeah. But- Which is which is low. Yeah. That's low. Like peak, I got it tested in September, peak marathon training, so running more, exercising more, all that. And it was like in the 600s, so definitely yeah. higher. <clears throat> but it was lower and I'm training less, which is really Yeah, so when I was in uh, when I was in the military, I did uh, I did like a, a quick stint at like a men's clinic doing like injections and blood draws. And like it was a TRT clinic, which is how I got like my general knowledge on it. Um, so within the clinic, um, you would come in, you get your blood drawn. And if your numbers were under 350, you would qualify for TRT paid for by insurance. So insurance covers testosterone replacement therapy if you are under that like threshold. Now, if you came in under like 400, 500, 600, under a doctor's um, recommendation, if they recommended that you were on it, like, like, so say that you came in and you were at 600 and they're like, well, like you're an ultra runner, like you do this stuff, like, yeah, we would probably recommend that you, that you supplement, then you could pay cash at the clinic. And you go in once a week, you get your injection. Once a month, they do your blood draws. Like, I think I think TRT has such a bad has such a bad rap that because of like people abusing it on the steroid side, like using it as an anabolic. Um, you know, like for reference, like a traditional dose of TRT at a clinic is like 150. So I don't know if that's like units or grams or whatever it's called, but like your dose is like 150 a week. But when these guys are pushing anabolic test and like they're pushing it like not prescribed through a doctor they're pushing anywhere from like four to six hundred units Jeez. a week um Do you, are you taking it right now i'm not i'm complete so i i pulled off of everything um just because i didn't i didn't want i don't want anyone like like i'm going into lead man i'm going into the lead challenge like like, like i got on it because i was like of the healing properties and um I don't want any question on on my ability, and you know if I if I do very well, and someone wants me to test, then I can test and say fuck you, and yeah. so, you know, and I didn't really know truly like when I posted that reel about BPC. So here's what here's what happened, 
and I talked about this on the other podcast as well. Um, what happened was, is I posted the reel about BPC. And this during- This is a peptide. Yes, yeah, yeah. So BPC-157 is a healing, it's a healing peptide. It helps you heal faster. Prescribed through a doctor. Um, during that time frame of the broken leg, I also looked into Mastron. And Mastron is also a healing property. That's an anabolic steroid. Not prescribed through a doctor. So I got on mass as well. While I was not, I wasn't running, I wasn't racing, and and I was kind of like ignorant to the fact of like where the story where the story is going to go. It'll kind of it'll wrap itself in. So, um, I also read on the internet that Mastron is highly illegal in marathoning, and in my head, I'm sitting there, you know, I'm brand new to the game, like we just talked about. Like I just started running in 2021. My first race was in 2022, and I'm like, okay, well, I was like, I'm not racing. I'm not even running. I'm like, so it's not illegal for me to use because I'm not, I'm not competing. So I had, um, I had a girl reach out to me on Instagram and she's like, Hey, like I saw that you posted BPC 157. Um, you know, is there anything else that you use to like help with that? And she's an elite marathon runner. Um, and I'm like, yeah, uh, I used Mastron, but just to let you know, like it's highly illegal in marathoning. And she screenshotted the message and sent it to whoever. There was some, there's some account here in Austin that's called like Breakfast City Bat Club, making fun of like influencers mm. and shit. They make fun of Matt Choi and I all the time. I know the guy that runs it. So if I ever see you, I'm gonna smash you in the mouth. Um, <laughs> Am I on there at all? I no, I no, no. It's been it's been pretty quiet lately. Interesting. But uh, yeah, 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 if they ever like, if they ever they ever post like they post on their stories and they make fun of Matt and I, mm. and um. <laughs> So she screenshotted that and it's run by someone that runs uh uh Jeff Cunningham's team. Mm. Um what is it? Bat City. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean they the people that follow the page and the page that follow, you know, they follow the it's all Bat City people. And I that must was not be big enough to Yeah. And that the was the one one of the girls on Bat City um is one of them that reached out to me. And so she, she screenshotted it and sent it to them. They posted it on their story like and tagged like BPN and and Spirited Hive and like all the companies that I was signed with and was like, and I was like, damn, like I was just trying to tell you like, hey, I'm taking this, like don't take it. Like, like, like you're an elite marathon or do not take this. Like, I don't know if I was set up. I don't know if they were trying to like. It sounds like it. You know, but like <laughs> then they posted it and like the crazy thing was is like none of these brands gave a shit. Like, like Spirited Hive literally messaged me and they're like, do you want us to report this? I'm like, yeah, d- d- no, like I don't care. Um, but yeah, I mean, people get so caught up in this stuff. Like, you know, so I, like I, at that point, like I kind of found out, like I was like, oh, okay. Like, like I can see this like misconception around, you know, that you're trying to like the Lance Armstrong effect, right? Like, you know, taking this shit and trying to hide it. But for me, I was like, I'm not, I'm not trying to hide it and I'm not trying to take it to enhance my performance. I'm trying to heal my fucking body. And, yeah. you know, so that's a big thing for me. And I, I had to like, you know, my mom's my go-to. My mom is, you know, it's, it was my mom and I for our entire lives together. And I called my mom and she's like, you know, she's like, I think you have two choices here. She's like, you either choose to try to cover it up or you talk about it because you did it. And I was like, well, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a liar and I don't, I don't cover anything up. So I was like, I'm just going to talk about it that I did it. And whoever has a problem with it has a problem with it. I don't do it now. Um, I did it to to try to heal my body quicker, and it and it worked. Yeah, I think the transparency and the the truth is always the right thing for sure. Because there's probably plenty of people out there that have been asked publicly, like, "Hey, you want anything?" And they say no over and over and over yeah. again. It's like the Liver King said it for so long, like he denied being on anything forever. It's yeah, like and so everyone clear. and everyone knew, like, yeah. like like everyone knew that he was on it. Yeah, but still denying and, it. But here's the thing, like like like, like you and I talked about on, on the run was like. <laughs> It didn't alter my physical appearance. It didn't like, you know, it didn't make me some jacked ripped dude. Like I took Mastron and tests to to try to help heal my body faster. And that was because you had the stress fracture, right? Yeah, yeah. I had three. And a close fracture of the of the fibula. And so for me, I was like, man, like anything I can do right now to try to to try to make, you know, to try to heal this faster, to get back to running quicker. You know, because I was in this like 
man, I was in such a dark, like imagine having the thing that you love most just ripped away. I'm always worried about that. Did you feel any different when you're on that? Like, yeah, like, did you have like better energy levels or? Yeah. So energy was, energy was a little bit better. The biggest thing that, that I noticed was, um, you know, I wasn't running, but I was lifting weights and you know, like when you lift and you get super sore, there was no, there was no soreness. Like, like, like I could go in and I could PR my deadlift and the next day I would PR my squat. And then the next day I would PR my bench press and there was no soreness. Like there was just, there was zero soreness. None. That's nuts. And even to the point where like, like you wouldn't even have to like push water or like eat great food and, and you just, you recovered. And that was the wildest thing for me was, was the recovery aspect. It was, it was, it was nuts. And that's why I can see that people are, people are on it all the time. You know, like, like, like that's yeah. why I see like, like people get on it and then they just never get off and they destroy themselves with it because it's like, just like any other drug out there, right? You're always chasing that, right. that high. And the high was the fact that you could, that you could lift weights and recover instantaneously. How do you feel not being on it now? How many, how many weeks has it been? Are you on it? Like any, like all that stuff you you text me like nine things <laughs> like i think part <laughs> yeah. of it was joking but like. yeah yeah no uh so right now um just on 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 peptides through blokes um which is prescribed through a doctor uh you get your blood drawn and um you know peptides just kind of help uh, help you heal you know help you help you stay healthy i guess um but no, other than that, like uh, I cut off of off of absolutely everything. Granted, um, you know, if you are racing, you know, these elite rate, you know, if you're running the Boston Marathon, you can't be on peptides. Right. If you're, you know, if you're competing in these like massive marathons, like you, you shouldn't be on peptides. But for me, like I'm just trying to do the best I can on, you know, running mountain races, yeah. and and it doesn't doesn't really matter. Just peptides right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and just peptides from this point. I mean, from this point moving forward. Um, Are, were you afraid like getting on TRT? Like th- that's one of the like, like caveats I hear to TRT is like doing it too young, and that's like ev- everything I hear is like okay, if you're under thirty, even if you have lower testosterone, maybe you shouldn't be on it. No, I mean, I mean, I I was on. I started TRT while I was working at that men's clinic, and we were wearing masks, so it was. It was, it was, it was like September, 2020. It was like right after COVID. Cause I remember that we, yeah, we had to wear masks. Um, that's when I first started on TRT because I, I got my blood drawn and which really makes sense because like my entire life, like I've never been like muscular, like, like, like I don't have like defined pecs. I don't have, you know, any type of defined muscles, which really makes a lot of sense because that stuff can be hereditary. And I got my testosterone checked and it was like 250. Damn. Yeah, and I would have been that would have been four years ago. So I turned twenty nine in March. So that'll be twenty five. I got on TRT at twenty five. I don't know. You know. I mean, but like, I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Either. Yeah, I mean, but there's you know there's there's way like like you know you you get prescribed like anestrozole and Clomid or um, HGC, which helps keep you fertile. Um, you know, cause like, I mean, yeah, there are some side effects, but being prescribed with a doctor, you know, they, they have things that they can give you, you know, because you're so young, um, you know, to, to make sure that you're, you're well taken care of. Yeah. Um, you know, but I mean, here's the thing. It's, <laughs> this is, you know, people get so caught up in TRT and, and, and all of this stuff and I'm, but they'll go to the doctor and get prescribed hydrocodone and be like, yeah, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, like <laughs> what? Like, so I, you know, I pick and choose my battles with it. And I mean, I mean, there's like, think about all the people in the world right now that are like on anti-anxiety med- medication. Like yeah. think about men that are taking anti-anxiety medication who play video games all day. What's their testosterone level? What if they, what if they got on TRT and, and went outside for an hour a day. Right. You, you think you need to be on an anxiety medication? Yeah. I I personally try to avoid any kind of medicine or like yeah. pills or anything. Like outside of supplements, that's like all oh, I take vitamins and supplements. Mm-hmm. But yeah, even if I get sick, like I had like a cold this week. 
and I just like just take a bunch of vitamins, and I yeah, feel, I feel better like two days you later. You load like, up on water, electrolytes, vitamin C, and right. then you sauna and ice yeah. over and over, and that's where I find. Like I was talking to um, Amanda had like Amanda had like the sniffles the other day, and I was like I was like are you, like I was like I was like you're sick. I was like I haven't been sick in like two years, and you know I mean, and then I was like oh like actually you know what I said is I go I go I haven't been sick since I moved to Austin. And I moved to Austin a year ago. So, like, it's been a whole year I have not been sick at all. And I'm like, oh, like, yeah, like, I'm, you know, excuse me. I'm taking vitamins. I'm I'm supplementing well. I'm eating healthy. I'm yeah. sauning and icing every single day. And people are like, oh, I always get sick. Yeah. I'm like, well, like, you know, yeah. are you eating well? Are you, you know, are you doing these things to not get sick? I mean, that's a cool thing about us living in Austin is, like, we get, you know, the UVs are... 11,000 every single day we can get the sunlight we can you know get outside we have every gym man when in Iowa the, there's not a gym with an ice the ice bathing was unheard of it was unheard of there's there's no ice bath anywhere you go to any gym here and there's ice there's sauna and ice every gym every which, gym has which sauna part of ice. Iowa are you from originally like dead ass like middle of the cornfield middle of nowhere southern Iowa what's in Iowa I don't think I've ever been there um have you driven through? What What, what are what the bordering is, states like Missouri? Yeah, so north you have Minnesota, mm. then you have Illinois, Missouri, and Nebraska, and they all kind of suck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I like 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 I I'm not kidding you. The um the 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 town that I grew up in, um we didn't we didn't have stoplights. Um, we had a town square. We had two gas stations, one on one side of the town square, one on the other. How many people? Like five, three, thousand? three bar, five thousand. My ass, no way. Really? Yeah, like maybe, maybe three thousand. Let's see right now. Google it. I need, I need a Jamie in here. Jamie, yes. pull that up, please. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's the population of small town Iowa? What's the name of the town? Melcher, Dallas. So it's it was two towns way back in the day mm. that were merged into one because they were so small. Interesting. There you go. 1,181. Damn. Yeah. My graduating class was t- like 28 people. <laughs> What's the closest city? Uh, Like Kansas City or something? Des Moines. Oh. Des Moines, okay. Iowa. It's the capital of Iowa, but Des Moines about an hour away. So now, mind you, though, I was born in, um, I was born in Knoxville, Iowa, which is about 15 minutes away. That's where the hospital is at. Um, population like 7,000. Um, and then grew up in Melcher, Dallas. And as in, as in grew up, I did first, second and third grade there. And then we moved my mom, my grandparents, everyone moved to get, they had job. they got jobs at the VA in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So I moved to Arkansas from fifth grade to 10th grade. And then that's where I grew up. Like that's, you know, I mean, that's where I'd be, I was a boy and then, you know, into young teenage adulthood and then moved back the start of my 11th grade year back home in Meltzer, Dallas. So I did 11 and 12 um, and then lived there, you know, joined the military, came back, lived there for, you know, two to three years and then moved to Des Moines. Um, but you said you had a single mom. Basically. Yeah. 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 So my mom had me, she got pregnant when she was 17. Um, yeah, super young. I could not imagine that. <laughs> Dude, I know, man. Like, like, no like, 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 I look at myself right now and I'm like, man, like, I think I'm like just like hitting that cusp of like maybe getting ready to like settle down like that. Um, and then I think about like myself like f- five years ago at, at 24 and I'm like, absolutely not. And then I think of <laughs> six years before that at 18 and I'm like, no way. Like, like I, I, I didn't even know who I was. Yeah. So yeah. So, um, you know, my mom got pregnant. My dad wanted nothing to do with it, and that's the story on that. Um, have you ever? Do you know who your dad is? Like, have you ever connected with him? Yeah. So, like, when I was eighteen, actually, when I was sixteen, he reached out to my mom, and uh, my mom came to me and was like, "Hey, like, your dad like reached out and wants to have a conversation with you." She's like, "I'm, you know, this is you know, it's your decision to make." And I was like, "Yeah, sure." Like, you know, so I talked to him on the phone. That's it was weird. It was super weird. And I feel like my mom, like, like as soon as I did it, my mom was like, fuck, like I shouldn't even have said anything type of thing, you know, because I like felt weird about it. 
And then uh, we went like, and then at that point he like had lived down in, he lived in Branson, Missouri. And we went and like, we went down, like, I was like, I want to meet him. And we went down and I met him and we hung out for a couple days and that was really it. Like other than that, like he's my friend on Facebook and comments <laughs> on my shit randomly. But to me, it's like, like he's a nobody. He's an absolute nobody to me. And, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that was that, like, you know, I, I wanted, you know, people like people have always said to me, like when I bring that up, they're like, man, like I can't even imagine they're like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, like, I don't know any better, you know, like, yeah. like, like, like there's literally nothing to be sorry about because all I know in my life is like strong women. And like, I was raised by a single mom that was 17 years old that had me when she was 18 and had two to three jobs for six, seven years. And like my mom's entire adulthood was taking care of me. And, you know, then being, you know, co-raised at the same time, thankfully by my grandparents. Do you have siblings? And yeah, I have a little brother who was, he's eight years younger than me. My mom mm-hmm. and his dad were together for a long time. Um, got engaged, never ended up getting married. Um, but yeah, so he's my, he's my half brother, but I don't, I don't believe in that weird shit. I mean, he's, he's my brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, so different dads, um, he lives out in Utah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like everybody's family has some weird thing. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody's on an island of like, oh, my family's fucked up. Everybody's family has something. Yeah. Like, yeah. even if your parents didn't get divorced or, you, you know, you didn't like lose a parent at some point or whatever it is. Like, dude, like, and I somewhere. feel so, I feel like so much, like, thank God I didn't have like a divorce. Like, I can't imagine how like that would traumatize you. Like, imagine if you're like, which I mean, I don't, I don't know your backstory, but imagine if you're like 12 years old and your parents get a divorce and you're like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. I was 17 when they got divorced. Yeah. That's even like, that's even crazier. Dude. It, well, it's, was this, that rough? Uh, yeah. But again, it's like, I treated it like a reverse role model situation of like, okay, there's nothing I can do about it. Like, instead of looking up to this situation as, oh, I want to emulate this. I want to be like these parents. Yeah. Uh, I just want to do the opposite. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It's like, a, it's a learning lesson in what not to do. Well, yeah, for sure. And like, and like, that's what I was thinking of. Like, I, I know that I'm like, I'm going to be a great dad because I know, yeah. I know what it's like to not have a dad. And I want to be able to give my child like everything that I never received. Yeah. That which just comes naturally to us, right? Like if if you're a woman and you have a baby, like you just know how to be a mom. Like that's a natural instinct. And like you should know how to be a dad. And and if you're a good fucking human, you're going to make a good choice to be a dad. Yeah, that's it's, it's it's like a cycle almost where it's like this generational thing of like, okay, you had a real shitty dad, then you have this motivation to be a great dad. Yeah. But I wonder a lot actually if being like a really good dad is almost not a good thing in a weird way because it, I mean, like you turned out pretty good. Like you're, yeah, you got yeah, big following on Instagram. Like you're doing cool things. You're working for yourself, like running all these races and you had a shitty dad. Yeah. I had no, I, I had almost no male upbringing. Yeah. And I, I think I might, I would say I'm like similar situation, didn't have like a great relationship. And I feel like I turned out okay. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, versus a lot of kids I grew up with in like high school, they had great families, great parents, didn't get divorced, and they ended up being like fuck ups because they never had to like work for anything. They never yeah. Had to well, like, and that goes into the choice of like, or that goes into the, like the the space of like you make that choice yourself. Yeah. Like you know, that's at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's like I don't know if you remember, you know, that I I posted I posted this picture that got shared a lot, and it was just a picture, and it was like a little bit about me. And I'm like, dude, like, I've been to jail twice. Like, I've been to jail twice. I've been into fights. I've had a loaded gun put to my head. I sold drugs in the high school bathroom. Like, like, I had, like, there is no fucking reason why I should be where I'm at today. Zero. Like, I have done some fucked up shit. But there just came a point in my life where I was like, I'm not, like, this isn't, this isn't who I am. This isn't who I want to be and just something, you know, I, I mean, I joined the military and I was still like, I was this young kid trying to figure it out. Like I was still partying and I was still like, 
you know, I went through a, a phase of like smoking weed and and doing stupid shit because you know you're 20 years old and you're in the military and you're like oh, I'm untouchable. And but then you know like like something just clicked and like truly it was like it was like 2018 that like it clicked and I was like like I want to be a good person. Like I want to uh, you know and I knew that I always had this I knew I always had this want of helping people and you know so in 2018, you know, like I was doing some like charity events and, you know, not really charity events. Like I was just, I, don't know, I was just trying to do good stuff. And then like leading into at the end of 2020, when I kind of started dabbling and running, got stationed in Virginia in 2021. And then that's when I really started leaning on my running to like give back. And, you know, then we started doing like the charity runs with the American flag and, you know, donating money, you know, tr- trying to raise money for valor fit and um you know all of this stuff that that i was doing then and then you're know, just slowly building this platform to just which i feel like kind of comes from that toxicity of not having a father figure where i like i want to have this platform because i never had anyone to teach me anything and now i have this platform where i can motivate and inspire others which is something that I never had. Like when I first went into the gym for the very first time, I was watching people that were doing like cable curls and overhead presses. And I had no idea what they were called. Not a clue. And I was like, and like, this is like, this is an adulthood. Like this is, this would have been like, like we were gearing up for deployment. This would have been like 20, 2016. Like when I first like went to the gym and like, I would just watch people and then I would just copy what they did. <laughs> <laughs> like I had no idea what I was doing and you know I mean and this is like way like pre like way pre Instagram yeah. you know like like my Instagram like I didn't really start until after the the BPN marathon one is when I really like I was like oh like people are like post pictures of their watch you know like like I mean because you didn't have anything either right no yeah like, like we both were just there yeah I had like a couple of thousand. Yeah, it like, was all people from high school. That, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, I had like I had like eleven hundred. Yeah, and you know, met a whole bunch of people, gained like five hundred followers that weekend just from like meeting everyone and 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 all of that. And then like I was kind of like watching like what they were doing, and uh, you know, then that's when I like I started kind of copying that, and it was just a slow trickle leading into I think about like. Actually, I looked back after I had 100K. I looked back and I, I moved to Austin with with 25,000 uh, 12 months ago. Dang. So I gained I gained 70, 78,000 in, in 12 months. That's wild. It uh it probably all came from like just a handful of posts too, right? Like, I mean, obviously you're going to have that slow organic growth through like, you know, this reel is going to grab 100 yeah. people here, 100 people there, whatever. But it's like 20% move the needle 80 percent yeah well what what really changed for me like 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 what changed everything was there was there there was two things and one was when i moved to austin i started posting reels i would never had posted reels before 2023 ever and and you can go back in my instagram and look i i, I just i didn't i started posting reels and i was like oh like you know like these these are kind of cool and, you know, cause I mean, it would like, you know, I had 25,000 followers and I'm like, how the hell did I just get 20,000 views on a reel? I'm like, that's insane. Now, like leading up into, you know, winning the BPN marathon, doing Ironman Texas, you know, like, like it, you know, climbed a little bit from people seeing that story into training for Leadville and the redemption at Leadville, it climbed a little bit. But the second part where it all changed was when I fractured my leg at Saddle to Surf in September. And I truly believe, like, I don't care what anyone else believes, like, I, you know, I believe in God, I'm a Christian, I have faith, like, I I believe everything happens for a reason, and I think that I needed to slow down, and that's why I think that that happened, because I had a meeting with Matt Choi right after that, and I talked to Matt, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I looked at my Instagram, like, all of my content is around running like and now that i'm not running i'm like what do i do and he goes you need to learn how to be a storyteller and from september to december i went from 35k to 60k by 
by me telling stories was me being me by being, you know, and you can probably see when I did it, like I leaned into being funny. I leaned into like not giving a shit and just being who I was. And it just slowly started to trickle and, and gain the 30 K over three months. And then, you know, the last couple weeks, you know, having the, the two reels that went for what, five, five million. And it was just like, it was, it was just, there's just a snowball effect. It was rolling a, a you know, a snowball down a, down a slope and it just yeah. bigger, bigger, bigger bang. Yeah. The storytelling is huge. That like, I mean, that's any good movie. It tells a yeah. great story. Any, anybody on social media, whether it feels like they're telling a story or not, they're telling a story in some way. Like there's yeah. a hook, there's a beginning. There's like, Oh, here's the proposition. <laughs> yeah. Here's like, and there's maybe some, uh, there, that you like get a hint of what the reward might be if you finish watching the video. Yeah, it's and like that's a story. Last night we had a we had a team call with Snap Supplements, which is the nitric oxide beats that we were talking about, and almost um, as good as two before. Almost as good, uh, in Jeremy's opinion, not in mine. <laughs> I was like, yeah, almost as good. Anyways, moving on. No, 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 no. Uh, so we had a call and like like they like we had already talked like they kind of like lean on me as a community leader, and it was so cool in that call to hear. I heard someone say. Like I was talking about, you know, growing followers quickly and like how to make good videos and, you know, just in, in everything in my opinion. And someone popped in and was like, Matt knows how to tell a great story very quickly. And I'm like, dude, like that's so cool to like hear from the outside looking in, you know, that like number one, like someone called me a storyteller and like, as you know, like, you know, people don't have a long attention span. Like you need to like get quickly to the point. They're like, yeah, he knows how to tell a really good story quickly and he's funny. And I'm like, yeah. yes, like, like that's so cool to like see people, you know, people that see that because I consider myself an elite athlete, but I feel like since September, since the leg fracture, I've become, became this elite storyteller mm -hmm. and I now know how to tell stories. And it's so cool to like, like yesterday morning, Amanda and I were sitting at the kitchen table and I pop my phone out and I go to Instagram Reels. This is it. This is exactly how I do it. I pop my phone out. I go to Instagram Reels. I'm drinking um, my coffee and I'm just doing this and just scrolling through Instagram Reels. I mean, just like five seconds on each video. And then, which you, you saw my reel yesterday, right? About like the, I hurt myself today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so then I see, I, I, I come across the video of Chow. And, and it's him singing the hurt by Johnny cash. And he's like, I hurt myself today. And then like instantly in my head, like I'm like hurt hundred, you know? And then, and then ideas started flowing and I'm like, okay, like that's a sick clip. And I'm like, let's clip that. And I, I quickly like, you know, clip it in my head and I'm like, okay, what can I add to that? And I'm thinking about hurt and I think about, okay, I hurt myself at Rocky. Like I was limping and I'm like, I have a limping video of me coming inside the house and then the, the text and, and it, and it all came together just like that. It's like these memes almost. Yeah. 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 And, and I, and I, I think I have a knack for it and, and it just takes me seeing one thing. So my, my, um, niche is, or the way that I do it is I have to consume content in order to make content. Mm. So, I have to see other things to get ideas in order to kind of make my own twist on it. And here's the thing about the internet. I don't give a shit what anyone says. It's free game. I'll copy, I'll copy you all day long. Like, like, like I, I don't, I don't care. You know, like, like, like the kissing rail that went viral. I saw a guy on the, a guy on a treadmill who was running and he's like, running is like kissing. And he, and, and, he, and he's, I don't even remember what he said, but then in my head, for some reason, I was like, I always say like, you got to kiss the homies goodnight. <laughs> and, and that popped in my head and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I was like, this is so funny. And I was like, now I just need a video of a group of people and I need a video of me. And then I, then I remembered like, I could say, okay, when did I run with a group of people? Okay. We did that track workout, go back to that date, found that one of me solid, found that one of us four literally in like the most perfect four person, you know, two and two. Yeah. And I'm like solid. And I threw it together and it was done in, in, in 30 seconds. It was two clips. Yeah. So yeah. Two, two clips in like what? Four seconds a piece. Yeah. And, and the average, and it was, it was like a nine second video and the average watch time was eight seconds. Interesting. Bang. Yeah. It, a lot of it. I mean, I guess it just depends on like what your 
goal is with social media. Like, you're very a, good at educating. There's a number of ways you can, or a number of routes you can take with it. It's like, are you trying to inspire people? Are you trying to educate people? Are you trying to just entertain? You're trying to make people laugh. Uh, are you trying to just like grow a following? Like there's so many different things you can do with it. And each one of those has its own value. I feel like, like, it, like, I don't know, Mr. Beast, for example, on YouTube, like, I don't know what his ultimate goal is necessarily, but like he's figured out how to just get the most views possible. Oh yeah. Like there's a game to it almost. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think if you're, I don't know, anybody listening, it's like an aspiring creator or something. Yeah. It's like, you just got to determine what your ultimate goal is yeah. with social media. Like, why are you posting? And that would then dictate, okay, are you going to make memes? Are you going to make funny stuff? Are you going to yeah. make like... And know. it can change. Yeah, 100%. It can change. Because like for me, thing. if you go back and you look at my stuff in like June, July, it was like motivational word overlay. And now it's like, you know, like you're going to come to my page and you're going to find someone hilarious. And you know, it's funny is hard to do. Yeah. 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 It is. But I, I feel like I think the biggest thing that I've leaned into is like making fun of myself because which like you and I have made fun of each other or you've made fun of me and you know, we banner back and forth. But what a lot of people don't know is I'm one for four on 100 mile finishes. <laughs> like <laughs> meaning three DNFs, one finish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, now, now granted, like, like take that with a grain of salt because I don't do it like anyone else does it. Um, you know, like like Rocky, you know, Rocky sucked because I rolled my ankle, but, you know, excuses, fuck that. Um, you know, and saddle to surf, like I broke the leg. Leadville won, I just didn't finish. You know, but like, <laughs> I'm not a good ultra runner. <laughs> like, I just do it. You know, like, 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 like I'm not Sally McRae. I'm not Courtney DeWalter. I'm not Adrian McDonald. Like, I'm not Zach Bitter. But what I can do is I can go out to these races and like I will break myself before I quit. But then afterwards, like I will always have a hell of a story to tell. And, and that's the, you know, that's the biggest thing. Like I built, I didn't build my following off of being an elite endurance athlete. I built my following off of being able to tell a story. Have you considered like, okay, what if, instead of just randomly hopping into like hundred mile races. Cause I know you have another one <laughs> in like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Which like, is great because like, I'm like, I'm going to kill that one no matter yeah. what and clip that and, and play it back because like that, I mean, it's a half mile loop. I'm healthy. Like, like life is good. Um, have you considered though, if, okay, what if I just did like one a year and I just did it really well? Has that ever appealed to you? Cause I'm more on that side versus like, okay, yeah, there's one in two weeks. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, for me, um, you know, just kind of like how we talked about Andy Glaze, like chasing after these hundred mile weeks and you're, and like, we're kind of like, Andy, I love you, but like, why, why are you doing this? Yeah. You know? And for me, it's just, it's just, it, it, it's, it's what I need to do. And, you know, getting to that place, getting to that dark place, which really sucks because all of my DNFs have came after mile 75 and that's fucking frustrating. <laughs> But is it like a, I, I haven't done a hundred miler yet in the marathon. They say, you know, the race doesn't start till mile 20. It's like there's, there's two halves to a marathon mile 20. And then the last six miles, is it kind of the same with hundreds where it's like, okay, the race doesn't start till like 70 or 80 or how do you, how would you yeah, describe Andy, that? Andy Glaze has said before that, um, I think it was at like 75. He's like, the race doesn't start till now because it gets dark. Mm. And like, that's when like, you know, once it like, yeah, once that the sun goes down and you start going into the next day that's when like it really gets kind of, but I feel like, like if you're a good hundred mile runner and, 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 and I, I consider myself, you know, I've, I've been dealt a bad hand, but it doesn't fucking matter. Like I consider myself a, a, a good hundred mile runner. Um, I, I get so lost in it. Like, like it's like, you know, at Rocky, like I did, I did the first 20 mile loop and the first 20 mile loop was the worst. And I don't even know why, but like, I was like, man, like, and it took me like three and a half hours I was like, this sucks. Like, man, like I need to get back there. And then 20 to 40 was, was fine. 40. And then at, at 40, I could pick up Amanda at 50. So at that point I was like, all I need to do is just go 10 miles and I'm going to hit 50. Then I picked her up. And like, from that point on, you're going to have pacers. You always have something to look forward to. So Amanda paced me from 50 to 60. I knew I was going to pick up Drew Darby from 60 to 80. And then with the ankle roll, like, you know, shit went South, but it's like, you always have to like, you know, yeah, like, but I think it also depends on the race because the race at Leadville for me, the race doesn't start until 50 because you have to climb Hope's Pass and descend it. 
And then at 50, it's the most demoralizing thing to turn around and look at it again and say, bro, I just did that for four hours. I have to do it for another four. And, but what happens is you climb the backside and then when you get to the top, it's like, all I have to do is just go down this mountain and I get to see my friends and family. And then, you know, but like, like Nick Bear said, I think in his, in his Leadville video, his race didn't start until he got back to Twin Lakes. He's like, now the race starts at like 56. So I think it really matters. You know, it's very variable. It, it, it varies, you know, yeah. varies for the person, varies for the race. But I would say, you know, when you hit 60, you're like, damn, <laughs> <laughs> everything hurts. Yeah. So Leadville was your first hundred. Yeah. Le- Leadville one. I call Leadville one. It was Leadville 22. Um, I got in on a 29 day notice and I never ran over 40. Um, I had a charity reach out to me in a charity. Yeah. Well, so they, they saw my first American flag run in July of 22. They saw it on Instagram and they reached out and they're like, Hey, we got a, we had a charity, like we had a guy get injured. Um, we have a charity entry. Do you want it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like at that point I'd only seen Leadville through Nick's through Nick bear's eyes. And, um, I went and ripped it and, no training, made it back to Twin Lakes at, at mile 56, um, sat down and literally couldn't stand up. Like, like I was fried, bro. Like I had never been so disabled and handicapped in my entire life. My little brother was there. He had to pick me up and push on my knees to lock my knees in so I could stand. And then I, oh and by that point, like, like I ran it, I just ran the front half too fast and then had to climb the mountain and I'd never climbed a mountain in my life. And by that point, like I, I walked the next 50 K and I walked so slow. I got cut off by time at the last aid station. But if you look at my Strava, I came into the last aid station at like 27 hours and one minute and, or like 27 hours and like six minutes, which means I missed the cutoff by like, by like six minutes. Oh my gosh. And I just, what I, mile was that at? 87. <sighs> yeah. So, that's uh, what is the name of that aid station? Uh, May Queen. May Queen. Yeah. Yeah. May Queen inbound. The very last one. Damn. Yeah. That's Which, tough. But, Get that but, close. But, yeah, but it was so sick, right? Because I'm like, I'd never run over 40 miles. I lived in Iowa. I'm a flatlander. Like, and then next thing you know, I go and I rip a 87 mile through the mountain in Colorado at 10,000 feet. And that's when I knew I was like, I was, I was like, this distance is mine. Like, like I love this distance. And, you know, then the next hundred was going back to Leadville again. And I went back to Leadville and we finished in 28. It was a great day. What did I, you change? What did I do differently? Yeah. Um, uh, training, uh, I upped my mileage. Like I had never ran a hundred mile a week. Uh, I upped my, my, my peak week was 122 miles in six days. Jeez. Um, so much. I did 24. This is like Monday, Monday through Saturday, 24, 24, 12, 24, 24, 12. Uh, is what I think like my my that peak week was. Um, All on the road? Yeah. No elevation. None. No elevation training at all. No climbing, no hills, no hill of life, no no nothing. But what I would do is every I would do I did doubles every day. So I would run in the morning and then I would come back and I would so I'd run twenty miles in the morning and I'd come back and I'd run four miles in the evening. That was my twenty four. And then I did twenty four again and then my twelve was all at once. Twenty four, twenty four, twelve. So twenty four 24, 12, 24, 24, 12. And after that four miler, I would throw on a hoodie. I would literally, I would, I would put a hoodie on and now it's July in Austin. It's 112 degrees. I would throw on a hoodie. I would tie it up as tight as I could. And I would pull the sled in the heat for an hour. I would pull it and I would push it and I would pull it and I would push it. And I'd get so dizzy. I'd have to like take all my clothes off and I'd lay there like almost like throwing up. Not recommended. Do not, do not. They, I'm, I'm just saying how I did it. Don't do it. Like, you, like where, don't do that. Where did you get this idea? Like, you're just like, this seems like it might be good. I came, uh, t- I came to, with, and I mean this, do not, like if you're an athlete out there, do not do that. Like it, that, that, it's not safe. It's not the way that I would prescribe any athlete to do it. You wouldn't either. But to me, it was like, I'm like, if I can mentally put myself in that dark 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 place i was just worried about something going wrong at leadville like like i wasn't worried about the distance i was like something's just gonna go wrong and like i need to prepare my mind for that 
So to me, it was like, if I can just get like, what, what, what's the darkest place that I can get to and how can I get there the fastest? And one day I was like, well, I was like, what if I just put a hoodie on and go run? And like, I have videos, like this is legit shit. Like I, I have I've seen it. Yeah. Like I have videos of me running in a hoodie and I'm just drenched. And to me, it was like, okay, I'm going to, like, I'm going to destroy myself mentally. So that way when I get to Leadville and shit goes South, which it did, um, you know, I can, I can push through anything. What happened at Leadville too? Well, <laughs> Drew, Drew Darby hates me for this. Um, I feel like I talk about Drew Darby on this podcast more than any other human. <laughs> he gets brought up so much. I, lo- I love he, Drew. Uh, <laughs> Nike had the unreleased uh, Ultrafly trail shoe. Mm. And I had the opportunity to wear it. It was not released yet. And they sent me the shoe. And they sent me the prototype which the prototype was off with the sizing. So they sent me a nine, but the nine fitted like an 11. Mm. So Drew's like, don't wear that. Like, you know, you can't wear that shoe. And in me and my head, I'm like, bro, like Nike sent me a shoe. I'm going to fucking wear it. Like, I don't have a choice here. Like, like Nike just gave this to me and said, wear it. So I wore it. Well, the shoe was way too big and on the climbs climbing up the shoe would slip back and on the descents mm-hmm. the shoe would slip forward so i had imagine a pencil right on the bottom of each foot lining the foot was a blister from rubbing so i have i have some pictures on my phone i had uh six blisters on each foot by mile 75 so from mile 75 to mile 100, I maybe ran maybe a total cumulative of three miles. Maybe. We were on pace for a 22-hour Leadville 100. And we did we did the front half in 11. Damn, that's fast. We did the back half in almost 18. <laughs> Because because and and, yeah. I, and 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 I did I, I ran all the way to seventy five like like we were we were killing it and then like mile seventy I was like like I knew I had the blisters but they hadn't they didn't hurt yet and you know the longer you're getting into the race and I'm like okay ouch by like mile three or mile seventy three I'm like oh no and mile seventy five I was like oh, this is the this is bad I stopped at mile it was like eighty. 84, we were climbing pipeline. I'm sorry, we were climbing power line, which is like the second steepest climb. And I remember I stopped and I just stared down at the ground. And Austin Myers was like, he was pacing me. He's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm just taking a mental image right now. And he's like, of what? And I'm like, of everything I'm feeling. Because I was in the, that was the worst pain Imagine, and, I, and I'm and i not kidding you, imagine walking on hot glass. That's the only way I can explain it. It was the worst pain I'd ever been in my life. I wanted to throw up. Like my feet hurt that bad from those blisters. And it didn't matter. We, we, we were popping them with paper clips and, and they were, we were duct taping over them. We were popping them with paper clips and they would fill right back up and then they would pop again and then they would fill right back Jeez. up and they would pop again. And yeah. Yeah, so that that's what went, went and and, I, and I'm and I'm glad that I, you know, had the mental fortitude, because I I don't know, man. Like I mean, it was really that bad. Like it was it was that bad to where I never thought about quitting, but like I could see where someone would be like, I can't I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Did you did you tell Nike about the shoes? <laughs> no, I just kind of like <laughs> I just kind of like moved like 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 I I just threw the shoes in the garage and I was like ah, I'm just gonna we're gonna we're gonna move on from this without the shoes. Like, did anything else go wrong, or it was no. literally all just no, caused? No, it was by a great that. day. It was a it was a phenomenal day, the best day ever. Damn, um, I felt great. Leadville has this thing of like making me, which it did at year one, did year two, and that's why I'm going back again. Leadville brings out this like gratefulness in 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 people to where like, I mean, you've been, you were there, right? Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, like, and I remember like almost in tears because I'm just like looking around and number one, like I love running. I don't love anything. I don't love anything more than running or running more than anything. I don't know. Whatever. I feel you. Yeah. So, <laughs> but then like you look around and you're in, you're in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Yeah. If you love mountains and I love mountains. Yeah. And I can't wait. Like, like I can't wait. To, I'm, I'm going, I mean, and that's another thing I'm grateful for is like, there's people that wait 
years and try to get into Leadville for years and years and years, and they never get in. Andrew Glaze just got into Leadville for the first really? time. Really? Is he doing yeah, this year? Yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah, he is. I can't wait. I'm going to trip him when he's out there. <laughs> Uh, I, gonna see I didn't know you're doing it again this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm doing the lead challenge, which is every Leadville event. Right. But what what are the all the events in that? Um. So the Leadville Marathon is the very first one that kicks off at the end of June, the very last weekend in June. Seven days later, on the Fourth of July weekend, is the Leadville Fifty. Five weeks after that, the second week of August is the Leadville Hundred Mile Mountain Bike. I don't have a mountain bike. Um. <laughs> the next day is the 10K. And then six days later is the Leadville 100. Oh my god! Yeah, hey, hey are you have you mountain biked ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be the one you're the most uh, like worried about, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, how hard can it be? It's just a bike, <laughs> right? I mean, I don't know. I've never mountain biked. So. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> I either. Say. But but I I talked to Eric Hinman and and Eric said that the mountain bike is like he's like it's not technical. The biggest like problem that you have is like there's a lot of like ascending and descending mm. and there's just a lot of climbing. So I'm like, okay, like I, uh, I took his road bike. I was like, Hey, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this bike. <laughs> I took his road bike and I'm like, Hey, I, cause I, I was like, I don't have a bike, which we can talk about that as well. I don't have a bike and I have a trainer, but not a bike. So I'm like, I'm just going to hook up this bike, his, Eric's road bike to, he's going to let me use his bike for the race, but I'll be able to, you know, I'm going to start training come, may you know training more on the bike and getting the legs ready for those you know those heavy pedals climbing and descending um but he said it's not very technical uh but i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna actually like ride the course with them oh nice um come like you know we're probably we'll probably ride it in june and we'll ride it again in july that'll help um and then just to get some familiarity with it uh but it can't be that bad right I mean, as I don't long know. as is everything's gonna be fine as long know. as I yeah. don't crash. You have like twelve yeah. hours. Yeah. So that's, oh, that's you're moving quick then. If that's that's a cutoff. It's like ten hour, like like Damn. It, ten miles an hour. Twelve yeah, yeah, it's a little under like ten miles an hour you have to average. Dang. Yeah, I've never mountain biked. I'm always afraid to mountain bike because I feel like I'm gonna kill myself. That's like, what I'm saying. Run into like, a tree or something. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean I also feel like I would be better at just picking up the bike and just climbing it on foot. Like, like if I have I to, like, about that. Yeah. if I have to like climb up a hill, like I might as well just get off the bike and carry just the walk. Bit. I mean, <laughs> this bike that he has, this specialized bike that he's going to let me use is like a $8,000 bike and it's like fully carbon. It's like, it, like I could, I could, I mean, you could just, you could sit there all day and just do this. Damn. It's so light. So did you, 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 did you see my video of me on the treadmill carrying it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, dude, I, I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to carry it. If I need to carry it, I'm going to carry it. Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> this is what it is. That'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited uh, for it. If you had any advice to, uh, I guess, to me, for finishing a first 100-mile mountain race, like, what would your biggest piece of advice be? Because I'm running Big 100 in June. It's, like, 22,000 feet of gain descent. <laughs> super mountainous. Very muddy. Yeah. Very technical trails. I'm sure a lot of people listening are probably getting ready to do a trail race this summer. Yeah. What would be your biggest piece of advice? Um, when it comes to, don't complicate nutrition. Um, I have an iron stomach. It's all calories in. Yeah. And I feel like Leadville one, like I was focused on like carbohydrates. No, which, which you and I, we could dive into that for hours, but um, you need to focus on your calories. Um, I would try what I said for Rocky and, and, and this worked and I felt great at Rocky. I felt phenomenal. And this is what I did. You're, if you're running five miles an hour, um, you're going to be burning around 500 calories an hour. Or, or, or let's bring that down. If you're running four miles an hour, you're going to burn around f- right under 500 an hour. So in the early stages of the race, I would make sure no matter what you're doing to push at least 500 calories an hour and really focus on the calories and not on like what the product is. Like... When I went out, I went out and paced one of my athletes um, at uh, Brazo Spend, Brazo Spend, and I could notice that he was getting under his calorie intake. And when he came into the aid station, I had the most massive scoop of peanut butter that you could ever see, and it was like mile seventy. And I'm like, "You're gonna eat this son of a bitch before you leave this aid station." And he's like, he's like eating it, and like it's late in the race. He's like retching, and I'm like, "Just keep eating it, brother." Like, oh like calories, man. It's all. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it truly is about calories. That'll save you later in the race. So, 
my advice is to is to stack up. I would try to at least get 500 calories in per hour. Um, stay on top of your electrolytes um, and your water intake. You should be you should be having to urinate, having to pee um, once every couple hours. Uh, I did I I which is another good thing for me at Rocky. Um, I I had to stop and pee a lot. I just kept pushing um, pushing electrolytes and water. Um, monitor what color that is as well. Uh, you want it to be, you know, it can be a little yellow, but once you start, you know, you don't, you don't want it to be brown. You don't want it to be like very dark. Um, so monitor that. And then when it comes to the running side of it, outside of nutrition, you want to make sure that the biggest thing is, is, is it comes down to how much energy you are putting out and you shouldn't be putting out much energy at all. So if you're running up a small incline and you feel like, you know, you feel that heart rate start to rise, why are you running? Like, like you have 100 miles, you have 24 to 30 hours. You should be putting out almost, it should be so, you should be energy efficient. You should be running at a, at a pace that is just the most cruise control that you've ever ran at. So if you have to walk, walk. So what we say is you walk the ups, you lightly jog the downs, and you run the flats. That would be like, and now do not like biggest, my Leadville one mistake was I ran power line that, that biggest incline I was telling you, you have to run down it going out. I ran down it at like a seven ten pace oh, <laughs> and destroyed my quads. Yeah. Don't do that. If you're looking down and you're like, I'm going to make up time. You're no, 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 no. Do not lightly, lightly jog the downs. Use poles. My advice is to use poles. You might think in your head, like, I don't want to use poles. Like, you know, no one else has poles. Well, the cool thing is, and this is where I wish that I had poles at Rocky. I did not take my poles at Rocky. I rolled my ankle right off the bat. Literally mile three, I rolled that ankle. If I would have had poles, I wonder if it would have been a different story because I could have taken that pressure off the ankle by using poles. Yeah. And the big thing is, is when you're going down and you have poles, you can kind of put your poles out and you're not putting as much pressure on those legs as you're going down. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, yeah. this is a lot of stuff that I've learned that that I think all of those things could really, could really help people. Yeah, it's super helpful. What about from like a, a mental side of things? Like how do you kind of chunk up the race mentally? To me, it's like, you know, you like you have to break it up right like like i think about and i'm going to use this because you can relate to it the bpn marathon when we ran that it was six and a half out six and a half back six and a half out six and a half back yeah so like once we went six and a half out all we had to do is come back and it was we were halfway and then once we got back to the out it was like all we had to do was turn around and, and come back one more time and it was over right so being able to break that up and whatever is best for you for me it was like okay like like we just talked about with Rocky, all okay, one lap, 20, that's great. One lap, 40, okay, perfect. Now at 40, I can start breaking it up to where I'm like, okay, in 10 miles, I get to see Amanda, my girlfriend, and she's going to pick me up, and she's going to take me for 10. So at 50, I'm like, all I have to do is just go 10 more miles, and I get to see her. So... I see her and then I'm like, okay, she's going to, you know, she's going to pace me for 10. And then I get to see one of my best friends, Drew, and he's going to go for 20. And then, you know, so breaking it up like that, like, so for me, it's like when I do Leadville, you break it up by aid station. So it's like, okay, I got to get to May Queen. And I know that that's 13. And then I got to, you know, I get to see everyone and like, it's a, it's a vibe. And then you get to go to outward bound and outward bound is like the massive field. You yeah. see everyone there. It's super sick. Then you get to Twin Lakes and you're like, once you get to Twin Lakes, all you got to do is climb Hope's Pass and turn around and you're coming home. Then you climb Hope's Pass and you get out to Winfield and you're like, all right, we're at, we're at halfway. This is sick. We're almost, you know, we're halfway done. Then you're like, all I have to do is climb this mountain one more time and I get back into Twin Lakes and the hardest part of the race is over and you pick up your pacers. So with that being said, chunking it up like that, it's very, very, very important who you have pacing you. And it's even more important, it's even more important where you put those people. So for me, it was, I did Amanda, my friend Copeland, who's an army ranger, second, and then I had Drew Darby third at uh, Rocky Raccoon. 
because I knew like, I knew I would like, I wanted to see Amanda first, you know, to kind of like bring my spirits up, which was great. Like she did. She like, she was, you know, la da da, you know how she is. Just, yeah. just, she was a vibe. And I had Drew last because I really want that, that last person to be able to push you. But I had rolled my ankle twice that I, we sent a text and I was like, Hey, like I, I need Drew next. Like, like, cause Drew and I are, you know, closeness wise of everybody. It would be like Amanda, Drew Copeland, like how close I was to everybody. And I was like, I was just, I'm, I need Drew right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's very imperative on like, on like where you put people. Like when I did Leadville last year, I had Casey Klein, Austin Myers, Lauren McGetrick. Lauren was in the military and she's a, a boss ass girl. And I was like, she's got to be last. Like, cause she'll be like, Hey, suck up your shit. And like, and let's go. So I put her last Casey Klein, great friend of mine, but like a, you know, same thing inside of like, like, like Amanda, like, you know, right. let's go. This is a good time. Like, <laughs> yeah. here we go. So I put her as my first pacer and then I knew I would struggle on power line making that climb. So I put Austin Myers there because I knew that Austin would be like, you know, the guy that I needed in the middle that was like, Hey, like, like, let's just get through this. So it's picking the correct pacers that can help assist you the best. Yeah. Have you ever had a, a bad experience with a pacer? Yeah. Leadville won um, when I didn't have time to have pacers um, because I was 29 days out, you know, yeah. and like, and like at that point, like I, I had, you know, 5,000 Instagram followers. I didn't know anybody. Nobody really knew me. So I just started reaching out and like to friends of friends of friends of friends. And I had a friend that knew of somebody who knew of somebody else who might know someone that lives near Leadville. And I had this girl that I got put in touch with. Her name was Izzy. I don't follow her. I don't even know where she went. I don't know anything about her. But she drove out to Leadville to pace me. And just so I wouldn't be alone. I had yeah. one pace. Like she was my only pacer. Like that was it. And that you know we walked for 50k together damn and like we didn't really like i didn't know her like we didn't talk like she was just kind of there like you know making sure i didn't like you know fall over and die or sleep or anything like that so i mean that wasn't like a bad experience but like that was me seeing like i'm like oh like pacers truly matter yeah. like like who you have with you truly matters have you done a race like andy glaze style with no pacers no no crew like no <laughs> dude like like yeah. <laughs> I I reached out to him before I was gonna run Rocky, and I was like, "Hey, dude, like, saw you running Rocky." I was like, "You know, I'd love to come out and pace you," and he's like, "No, I'm good. No pacers makes it harder." <laughs> exactly what he said. Like, I have the DM. <laughs> like, and I'm like, "Wow, uh, yeah, I figured you'd say that." Good old you know? Andy Glaze. I mean, <laughs> same thing as Goggins. Like, Goggins yeah. don't have you know these people don't have pacers, but for me, it's more of like it's more of like a safety aspect. You know, like going out there overnight and like i told you like i hallucinate really bad and and have a lot of like weird shit that i see so for me it's like i know that i kind of need someone there um with the half mile loop that i'm doing here in three weeks i won't need a pacer yeah um you know so it's it's here and there like you know you mean if you're running a half mile loop at a 12 minute pace no matter what at the half mile you're gonna be able to look and see people um, like you're gonna be able to see your crew the, like I could stare at my crew the entire time and then you're gonna see them every six to eight minutes 100 miles on a half mile loop 200 laps have you done any kind of looped ultra or, or looped race just the 20 the the rocky oh, rocky oh yeah, yeah very different yeah yeah. Uh, yeah one thing I don't know if there's really a way around it but for me because I did that that one yeah. mile loop unsolicited advice uh I think you have to figure out a way, and it's probably going to be different for each person, but a way to not walk every time you go by. Because because what I ended up doing, I did the first like forty miles, all the basically ran the entire forty miles. Yeah. Like I would grab stuff, grab a gel as I went by our little like aid station. But then the last twenty miles, I started getting really bored. I think, and so I would like make little deals with myself. Where I was like, I'd run to the little aid station, and then I'd walk for like point one miles for like a minute or two. Then I'd run the 0.9, then I'd walk for 0.1 by the aid station. And so I end up walking probably way more than I would have Yeah. if that aid station wasn't there every mile. Yeah. So if you're seeing it every, you know, like four or five minutes, it's like, it's going to be so easy. It could take up a lot of time. Yeah. It's going to be easy to stop and walk and like not want to chat with people at the aid station or I don't have, know. Have you heard Jesse, is it Jesse Il Iltzer? Itzler. Itzler. Yeah. yeah. So Jesse Itzler did a, a hundred where he ran for seven minutes. 
Oh yeah. And walked for three. I've heard that the entire race. And so I don't know. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I yeah. Thank you for that advice. I love that. But I I think yeah I think I think there's there's something to, uh, but you know we're talking about breaking it down. Like I, I think that there might be something to hey I'm gonna run four laps, and then I'm gonna walk a lap, and I'm yeah. gonna run four laps and I'm gonna walk. You know, I mean. Because I think that my legs are conditioned enough that they're used to stopping and starting. So, you know, I mean, obviously, no matter what, like, you're going to run. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because (laughs) all of my races that I've done have had types of elevation. Like, even Rocky Raccoon had 10,000 feet in 80 miles. And that that blew my mind. That's crazy. I don't even know where it came from, to be honest. But it did. Um, there 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 was good hills. But this this is flat. It's yeah. flat, flat. So you actually, you know, like like we just talked about, like you, you know, walk walk the walk the ups and jog the downs. There's no ups and downs. So yeah. Yeah. when you know, you, at some point, you're gonna have to start making deals with yourself. Yeah. Saying like, hey, like I'm gonna I'm gonna walk. Um, yeah. I just need to, I need to. I think I think that's gonna be a decision to make on the fly. Yeah, because I mean, unless you're like Zach Bitter or something, you're probably gonna yeah. have to walk at some point. So you have to strategically do that, so that because because I like in hindsight, I I just walked way too much. Like I didn't have to walk every mile. Yeah. But mentally, it made it easier to get yeah. through it. So I don't know. Come up with some strategy, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and, for and sure. And it could be like on the on the on the on, fly on the fly on yeah. the day decision. I mean, the biggest thing for me, I think, is like no matter what, like like I'm gonna complete this hundred. Yeah. Like it's a 48 hour charity event. It it could take me forty hours, like like it, it don't matter. Yeah. And the biggest thing for me, I think, is just uh, number one, like we're going out there to raise money for the kids. Number two, I just need to see the hundred finish line again. Um, and number three, like I just I want to see how the body feels. Like I I need to get that hundred mile distance and see like, you know, obviously like I know like my my nutrition's on key. Like like I I found that out at Rocky. The leg no longer hurts. I found that out at Rocky, which I'm really actually excited because this could be a really good race for me. Like this could be fast and you know, but with the hundred mile distance, you never really know what can go wrong. Yeah. It's just so much time. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think I would be very happy with a sub 20 hour, but like you said, I think, you know, that you can get caught up in that, you know, chilling out like, uh, Ken, Ken all right. Is his name? No. Right yes. out. Ken right no. out. No, I need to, I need to, uh, Ken, yeah, so he's Ken the alt right. That can't be his last name. Because <laughs> your last Kenneth Alderlich. Don't know. He is the guy who set the fastest time across Texas at uh, sixteen days. Oh, I, a few people have sent me him to like try and get him on the podcast. Yeah, I, I haven't taken the chance Dude, to rinse out. He is a hell, he would be he's he's like he's like me like like he's really? just he's a goofy dude like doesn't give a fuck like he's 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 awesome. Rocky Raccoon he ran twenty one hours I think. Um, he took three naps. What? I swear, <laughs> like like the, he he took three naps. So another part of me was like, okay, if I if I ran Rocky super fast, um. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I mean, usually did, you don't nap during a hundred. Did I did I rock Rocky Raccoon well enough? Question mark. I went slow and easy for the first ninety seven miles with three forty five minutes nap, forty five minute naps sprinkled in, what? and then really pushed it the last three miles. Twenty one hours and one hundred miles later, I was finally able to sleep in my warm bed. Three forty five minute naps during a hundred. <laughs> obviously, he wasn't like trying to break a record or anything. No, like, no, no, no. He was just vibing. He was out there vibing. Interesting. Three 45 minute naps. So what is that? An hour and a half plus 45? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know Damn, math. Two hours, 15 minutes of napping. And he still finished in 21 hours. That's crazy. Yeah. But I wonder, dude, I would be afraid of like how stiff my legs would be. Yeah. After laying down for 45 minutes. Like I'd be afraid I couldn't get up again. I mean, he's also the same one that told me like, in his like training for a run across Texas, he never like ran over fifty miles a day or fifty miles a week. Mm. Like, like he was training for Texas like it was a marathon. Whoa. He said he's like he's like yeah he's like it wasn't even hard. The only hard part was mentally. Interesting. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> How many miles is that? Eight hundred and fifty for him, but he didn't go through. He didn't go through uh, Austin. He went through Waco. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you go from what is that? Is it like El Paso? El Paso to Galveston. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. Is that the far? That can't. 
Is that the farthest, like, two points in Texas? Yeah, I think so. I well, go, like, you could go further. No, east. there's someone. There's someone that went. I think there's someone that went north to south. That's probably farther before. Maybe. But um, there Texas was also a lady so that did it a while back that got hit and killed. Oh, whoa! Yeah, she was trying to run across. Yeah. Damn. Dude, it's sketchy. We went and uh, when Robbie Ballinger yes. was doing that, like, outlast the Tesla, that, that Tesla thing. We went and paced with him for a little bit, dude. Like Texas roads don't have shoulders. <laughs> it's like you're running on like a white line. Yeah, and that's like all you have. Like if you're like inches from cars. So El Paso to Galveston is a total of like when you put it in Google Maps, 850 miles, and it's going through San Antonio. Mm. Um, maybe like, no, I'm sorry. 800 total miles, but going through San Antonio. Um, but if you change it to walking, it says, uh, we can't find a way there. (laughs) (laughs) So walk on the interstate. (laughs) Yeah. So somewhere, you know, somewhere between 800 to 950 miles, um, which leads us into that's what's after lead, the lead challenge for me. And when are you going to do this? October 1st. How long do you expect it? Are you trying to like, well, it's a different course. Yeah. Different see, route. see, and that's the thing. So the, here's the really cool thing. When I, I came up with this idea randomly in my head, like, like there was no inspiration. I was like, dude, like I'm going to run across the state of Texas. And I texted it to Drew and Drew's like, it's already been done. And I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> he knows like, everything. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he, he's, and he literally knew exactly who did it. So he sends me Kenneth's like link of like when he did it. So what I did is I, got on to Instagram and I searched his name and I found him and I sent him a message and I was like, Hey bro, like, you know, and people can be really touchy about this, you know, because you know, he's like, well, like, like he, he ha- could have had all right to tell me to fuck off. Like, so I sent him a message. And I'm like, Hey dude, I was like, I came up with this idea of like running across Texas. Like I saw that you already did it. I would love to hop on a zoom call with you. And he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, he's like, he's like, how about like you hop on a call with my whole team? Interesting. And I'm like, yeah. That's cool. So I literally hopped on a call with him and his entire crew and they were like, this is how we did it. La da 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 da. Told me like their route. But the biggest thing is, is that I don't think, you know, I don't think I can really go for the fastest time across Texas because number number one, like I, I can't take a record from Kenneth because it's not going to be the same route. Yeah. Like, 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 the, like it's going to be different. Number two, the. F- <laughs> The fastest time across, it, it, I'm just going to run across Texas. <laughs> <laughs> that was the record for the longest silence on this podcast. <laughs> because because this is something I've thought a lot about. Like, like I, I, I've really thought about this a lot on, you know, I'm not here to, to like take his record. Like I just want to do something really hard. Yeah. And how cool to be to, to run across this state of Texas. Like, like, like that's hard. And like Texas is, the largest state yeah and west texas is mountainous hilly too yeah so uh yeah i think it's like 40 45 thousand feet of elevation gain um and it could be more yeah yeah Hmm. and so the thing is is like is like you know you're gonna you're gonna leave el paso we're gonna come through austin we're gonna go south of houston into galveston and I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. Coming through Austin is going to change the going to change the mileage. So if I go, if it's 750 miles, and I set the fastest time across Texas, it it's not really that cool because Kenneth did it in 850 miles. Right. So for I, me, it's just getting across the state. And if it takes, you know, I would love to do it in. I'd love to do it in two weeks, just because that's just kind of the time frame in my head. You know, I don't want to be out there for that long. Yeah. But um, if it takes me, you know, 30 days, no matter what, we're going to move across Texas. People have done it. There's, there's been multiple people that have done it. Kenneth, how many, how many miles a day with like, like 50 K a day, basically 50 miles, 50 miles. A yeah. Day. So I want to try to do 50 miles a day and that'll be 12 hours on 12 hours off. It's a work day. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be, yeah, we give us about two weeks, right? Yeah. 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 50, 52 a day would put you at like 15 days. Dang. Mm-hmm. Isn't uh? Do you know Paul Johnson? Yeah. Uh, Tomorrow. Yeah, he's taking off on the transcon. I think he's trying to set the record. Right? Yes. Uh, forty days. <clears throat> forty days, three thousand miles, average of seventy-five miles a day. That's nuts. Yeah. 
That's wild that Texas is 850 and the whole U.S. is 3,000. It's 3,000, yeah. That's nuts. It's that's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. I, I thought he does like 100 miles a week every week, right? He does like yeah, crazy Yeah, volume. yeah, yeah. So his uh, his long runs, his back-to-back on Saturday, Sunday were uh, 40 milers. Back-to-back so, back 40? Back-to-back back 40s. Jesus. Yeah. That's a lot of running. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're running for seven hours. Seven. I mean, you're. It's a, it's a work day of running on Saturday and Sunday. But how, how are you going to train for? Are you going to do anything differently, or just kind of like do what you? I don't think. Do? I I don't think so. Uh, and and someone asked me this. They're like, they're like, how do you like, like how do you train for that? And I'm like, I think that there's more like in this type of distance and this type of like endeavor where you're doing 50 miles a day. I think it's more. How are you going to train for recovery? Yeah more than train for the miles and to me it's like okay i think that the training lies in testing and trialing products that are going to aid in the fastest recovery possible so is it a supplement is it the compression boots is it an ice bath is it a sauna is it you know so i think the biggest thing is like going out and the like like this is how you could test it i think going out and running 25 miles on a Saturday and then testing a product and going out and running. It doesn't even need to be another 25. It can be, you know, 10 to 15 on, on, on Sunday. And it's like, okay, that made me feel like this, write that down. And then on Wednesday, the next week, you know, take two or three days to recover, go out and do 25. And then the next day go out and, and, you know, or, and then that night trial and test, you know, X and then go out the next day and run 10. And say, okay, that made me feel like this. Did I feel better or did I feel worse? And then it's just, it's literally doing that for weeks and trying to find out like what the best recovery process is. Yeah, just a recovery game. What what kind of, what kinds of things do you think you'll try out? Or do you already kind of know, like have an idea? Um, you know, the compression boots for me are are are, are pretty good, um, especially doing them like the morning of my run. Um, just to get the blood flowing, you know, I mean, obviously like, like wearing the compression boots, it squeezes the blood out and then it allows the blood in. Um, obviously like we've already talked about, I'm a huge sauna and ice guy. I don't know how the hell I would sauna, you know, I mean, I've seen them on trailers. Like, yeah, well, like a, like a portable sauna for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, sauna box has a, has a portable sauna that I actually already have in the garage. Um, so having a portable sauna that you can pop up at the end of the day, ice barrel, having an ice barrel there that you can just fill with ice and get in an ice bath. Um, and then just, you know, products like, like the nitric oxide beet, right? Like you're, you're taking a beet powder to help dilate the blood vessels, which is helping with nutrient flow. That's another key, you know, there's devices out there, you know, red lights, um, you know, then there's other recovery devices, shock therapy, you know, I've actually thought about depending on how much money that we can raise, you know, to make this happen putting a physical therapist on, you know, a two week, you know, two weeks of pay to come out and like mm-hmm. make sure that I'm taking care of the body. Um, but with that being said, the biggest thing that I'm doing here is, um, once again, like I said, you know, with the run, you know, with the run with the flag, I raise money for Valor Fit. Um, I want to try to raise a hundred thousand dollars for Valor Fit. And what Valor Fit's mission is, is they take veterans that have been in tough situations that have PTSD or that are just yearning for that, you know, community feeling that we had in the military and they put them into gyms and they pay for their gym membership. They pay for CrossFit. They pay for personal training and stuff like that. Um, So my goal is to raise $100,000 for them to help offset that cost and, and, you know, change, change lives for, you know, veterans. Um, Troy Peterson, who is the owner of Valor Fit, uh, a couple of years ago, I told somebody, I was like, man, like I'm just getting like, you know, I'm getting tired of running. Like I wasn't lifting that much. I was like, I need, I need to change a pace. Like when I was active duty and she's like, you know, get a hold of Valor Fit. And I'm like, well, what's Valor Fit? And she told me the same thing. And I called Troy and this is why I love Valor Fit because I called Troy and Troy's not about the, the, you know, showing shit off, right? Like I think of, you know, there's a plenty of charity organizations out there that, you know, they just want to post, right? Like this guy doesn't have a leg and, and I, you know, we helped him do this. Like I didn't need help. I didn't need financial help. And I called Troy and I was like, Hey, like, you know, um, someone recommended me, you know, to call you. I was like, I'm just looking for, you know, some type of fitness to add to my running. And he calls me back like an hour later 
And he's like, hey, I just got you signed up for six months uh, at the CrossFit Merle Hay right down the road. He's like, go in and uh, and get your paperwork signed. Damn. And I'm like, what? Like, like I didn't, I, I, I was like, I, I don't, I don't need, you know, I didn't need that. Like, I was just, you know, I, they just told me to call you, and you know, you would, you would, you know, tell me a good place to go. And it wasn't advertised, like you know, like, 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 like he didn't need to do that, and he didn't like use me as a public showing. You know, he just did it. And so for me, I'm like, man, like you know, like this company isn't you know exploiting veterans that need help, you know, to try to get funding. Like they're just helping people. And, you know, so anything I can do to, to raise money for them as a thank you, um, that's what I want to do. So that's going to be, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pocket a single dime from this run across Texas. I'm not going to, I'm going to make $0. I'm probably going to lose money in the process, not being able to, you know, coach or do anything like that yeah. for, for a month. But we're going to bring, you know, we're going to bring brands on board that are going to, you know, want to help us. And we're going to raise a hundred thousand dollars for Valor Fit and we're going to run across the state of Texas. That's dope. Dude, that's one of my favorite parts about these like crazy endurance events is there's almost always some charity aspect to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like I was given this platform. I was, you know, I was given this ability. The same thing as, you know, any hero or villain story. Like, are you going to use it for good? Yeah. And, you know, if there's plenty of veterans out there that I'm sure that would give anything to have a limb back, have a leg back, not have PTSD, not have to take 50,000 pills a day to, to continue living and would kill to be able to run a mile. And I'm going to go do 850 of those for them. That's sick. That's what's going to, that's what's going to drive me. Give me goosebumps. I love that. So is there a way like this will come out maybe like a month from now? So like, march or yeah April? we're so we're like a- launching um we're launching like the first video of like i'm gonna run across texas we're gonna launch it uh the day after the hundred nice. so we're gonna because usually uh, as you probably know like after you race you know your your shit's booming um yeah. so we're gonna use that that we're gonna use that race and then so i'm gonna race march 22nd to march 23rd and then march 24th uh, we're gonna drop the first like video of hey this is what we're doing because lead man like lead man's cool right but i like i already raised money for the leadville charity foundation like it's already it's already done and i'm already doing it i'm just doing that to fill my schedule and to stay sane the biggest goal is 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 texas so we're going to immediately start pushing that um you know in late march um yeah i'm pumped like i'm meeting uh cj finley you know him? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. He's uh, I know an of him. entrepreneur, businessman, uh, meeting with him tomorrow. He's going to help me start building out my brand deck. Um, you know, Barbell Apparel has already come on board uh, to support the YouTube documentary. And then now it's really just getting brands that want to come on board to, number one, help assist me with supplementation. And then number two, that, you know, believe in the mission to help us make it make it happen. You know, so whether nice. that's you know, you got to look at cost here too, right? Like, you know, if people are going to come out, like, you know, you need to be able to supply them with a monetary value in order to be there. Um, so, you know, helping pay some people to be there, helping pay for food, fuel, you know, RV rental, you know, something, you know, a- anything yeah. is going to go towards, you know, making this possible. And the biggest thing is that these companies are going to come on to help us monetary, mon- monetarily in order to be able to do this to supply valor fit with the money that we're going to raise them. Dude, so, that's sick. If you have like a link or anything, yeah, like, like a like a donation page or whatever. Let yeah, me know. yeah, 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 yeah. We will for sure. We will uh, <laughs> hopefully launch that come April. That'll give us April, May, June, July, August. That'll give us seven months. Yeah. Um. To to really kick that off. Damn. That'll be sick, dude. I'm excited to follow along. Yeah, I appreciate it. You have to come out, and get some miles in. Dude, I might have to. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, if we I, still live here, we'll see. Yeah, maybe I'll fly in. Where I don't know. If, I don't know. That's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> A whole another rabbit hole, yeah. dude. Um, like to the average person <laughs> listening to this, they probably think you're a little crazy. Yeah, like, this guy's running these hundred mile races. Like it sounds so normal, and it, I think in a lot of ways it does sound normal. Like when, we, like within our spaces, when we're talking about, oh, where he's running hundred miles this year. It's like to the average person, it sounds so insane. Like, what would you say to that person? It's like, 
100 miles and you don't die like i you don't can, even drive that far. yeah you can do that like <laughs> it's all well, relative yeah one like what would you say to them and then like like why if they're like why do you do these crazy things yeah what would you say to that uh i mean the first thing that i would say you know if they're like you know that's crazy like i can never do that um you know there was a time where uh you know i had a back injury from the military and i went through like such a long period of time of dealing with like chronic back pain and I remember telling myself, I was like, I'll never run a marathon. Like, 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 there's no way that I would ever be able to run that far. Like, cause I couldn't even run like, you know, a military PT test of two miles without having like some type of like back pain. I feel like we'd put this limitation on ourselves where we just tell ourselves like, I would never do that. Or I could never do that. I think your words are very powerful. And, you know, seeing that like this hundred mile space is not a small space. Like there are a lot of people that do this. So number one is just, you know, don't limit yourself. There are, you know, there's, you have, you have so many possibilities and there's so much stuff that you can do. And I think that you just, you know, like I just said, you just put, you put limits on yourself. Um, you know, I think about long days in a factory, 12 hours in a factory, like, man, like I would never want to do that. Right. Like, and there's people that do that every single day, six days a week for 30, 40 years. Um, you know, so it's all, it's all relative. And then, uh, you know, the, you know, the mental side of it, you know, I, I've been through, I've been through a lot of hard shit. I've been through, you know, a lot of traumatic events. I've been through a lot of things that, you know, normal people that have normal lives haven't been through. And I feel like me chasing these hard endeavors is the fact that like, no matter what I put myself through now, I've been through harder shit. I've been through real life shit. I've been through the chaos and the turmoil and you know the bad situations that are that will never relate to wow my body hurts while I'm running a hundred like you know and then on top of that like I said earlier like you know we just talked about a friend of mine Mitchell who was a um, co-founder of Ashe Muscle Gel who was healthy as an ox and just randomly passed away after getting sick. Mitchell was supposed to run the Leadville 100. If you could go back three weeks ago and he was still alive and you asked him to put a dollar amount on running a hundred milers, how, how many, how many dollars would you pay to do that? I bet he would say as, as much as I have, he would do anything to be able to come back and run that race with me and run that race with everyone else. I do it for those people. And, you know, those people that can't, those people that won't have the chance to do it. Like, I know for sure, like, Mitchell would have been out there with me during that run across Texas doing something. I know that Ashe Muscle Gel would have been involved in that entire process. And now he's never going to get the chance to be there. So for me, it's, it's, it's doing it for those that, that can't and those that don't have a chance. Because we have the opportunity to do it. We have the capability of doing it. We are healthy. We are fit. And I think we take a lot, you know, we take that for, for granted. And that's something that I want to keep reminding myself not to do. And by, you know, do I do too much? Maybe. But I have the capability of doing too much and others don't. Yeah, that's powerful. That's a good answer. I like that answer. Yeah. Yeah. I think it almost always takes losing something to realize what you have or for yeah. you to be grateful for it or appreciate it. It's like, I don't know, I don't know. You lose your leg in some freak accident tomorrow. Right. It's like, wow, I took all those miles I ran for granted because now I can literally never run again. Yeah, and I mean, just like just like we were talking about, you know, way less than what you just said, but like when I had the leg fracture, mm -hmm. I couldn't run for three months. And, you know, I was just like, it, that almost destroyed me. It did. Like I was, I was in a dark place for a while. And now I'm like, man, like, now I, I know I need to stay healthy. I know, you know, that, that taught me a lot, you know, cause I don't ever want to feel that again. So I had the, I had the, you know, I'm grateful for having that happen to show me what it's like to have it ripped away Yeah. because now I know the correct way to do it and where I don't want to be back at again. Yeah. Yeah. And to, to your point on the, that first point you made about like going through real shit in life is never gonna remotely be, uh, or the, the, the difficulties you find in a race are never going to remotely compare to no. real shit in life. No. Uh, I've been reading uh, The Science of Running. 
It's such a good book. If yeah. you're like nerdy about it, like me, yeah. I, I would definitely recommend it. But it talks about the governor. Goggins talks about the governor yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But like from a scientific standpoint, it's like a real thing we have in our brains for like survival purposes. Like yeah. To not push too far beyond something. And I think, I don't think I know people that have like real life hardships and traumatic experiences and stuff that governor gets shifted up and up and up yeah and so then you become a better athlete and, yeah and i think like any good athlete i know has had some like real hardships. yeah well life. i said this i said this once on cj's podcast and it caught a lot of heat but i said i don't think that anyone that has a perfect life and that grew up rich with a loving great family and you know just had everything go their way is going to go and chase the hundred mile distance. No. Are there people that, that, that do it? Yeah, I guarantee it. There's, you know, a billion people in the world, but the majority of us have had traumatic experiences to lean right into what you just said. Yeah. That, that we, we go out and we do these things because we've been through the tough shit and nothing will ever compare to that. hundred percent. Yeah. It's not, it's not necessary. But it uh it definitely helps. Yeah, it makes running hundred miles a little bit easier <laughs> because yeah. it's yeah. I mean, I can't say from experience. I know hundred miles is hard yeah. from what I hear, but um, yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier. Maybe I'm excited for you to experience it because I mean I'm I mean because you already know so much. You've already you're you've already, yeah. you've already been in the space where like I am just I'm mind blown at the fact that you haven't done it yet. Um, just because you know so much and you have so much experience in it that like. I think you're going to absolutely thrive in it. And I think that it's going to, I think it's going to grab you by the throat and, and, and you're, you're going to find like, as soon as you do it, you get, I'm going to give you a week and I'm going to message you and I'll be like, yeah, when's your next one? Because <laughs> you, you're, you'll, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it. For I'm sure. on the wait list for another one later this year. So we'll see. I, I yeah, I, I know I can finish it. It's just yeah. like a matter of doing it. I, the biggest thing is just like, I don't really know what it's going to be like. Well, I say that a lot. We don't, I don't feel like we really train to be able to finish them. You know, as, as elite athletes, we don't train to be able to finish them. We train to not feel as bad after. Exactly. Yeah. You always know you can finish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, like, like I said, like I'm going to go out and I'm going to run 200 circles. Yeah. That's going to happen. Like, like, like it's flat. It's there's, there's, there's no, you know, you look at positive or, you know, you look at, okay, you know, what, what could go right? What could go wrong? There's not a lot that could go wrong on a flat circle. Yeah. You know, so I know I could finish that, but like what I'm training for now is like, okay, how quickly can I bounce back, recover and be ready for the Leadville marathon? Yeah. There's levels to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more, I just want to finish the damn thing. Yeah. It's like a 36 hour cutoff. You have so much time. Yeah. But what's the elevation gain? It's like, 22,000 gain, <laughs> gain and loss. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyways, dude, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. I love it. Anything we missed? Did you get your blokes clip in there? <laughs> right, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Who's your go-to provider for peptides and blood work? Dude, that's a, actually a <laughs> solid question. That's a great lead up. Um, no, so we, I don't think we, we didn't talk about the testosterone dip. Oh, oh yeah. Let's circle back to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, before Rocky Raccoon, I did, uh, I did a blood draw. So, all right, here we go. <laughs> Quip. <laughs> it's because, you know, you got to make it quick, right? <laughs> yeah. 60 seconds. So 24 hours before Rocky and 24 hours after Rocky. Nope. <laughs> Clip it again. Oh I hope nobody's listening at this point. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. All right. So 24 hours before Rocky Raccoon 100 and 24 hours after Rocky Raccoon 100, we did a blood draw with Get Blokes, which is a company that I work with where they do blood draws and supplementation and peptides and TRT. So what we wanted to see is we wanted to see what changed in the body during a hundred mile race. And the biggest thing that we saw was a drop in testosterone. So my testosterone scores were like nine something. So 900 and something the day before and the day after they were low 400s. So we saw almost a 500 point drop in a, in a 20 hour race of testosterone along with like inflammation within the body. I was super dehydrated. Um, but what was really cool is that they looked at all these things and they adjusted my smart supplement stack, um, which is the supplements that they send me in pill form. Um, they adjusted that to help me, um, better prepare 
leading up to the race to help me fuel with supplements during that race and not have that happen later. So I'm super stoked about that. Damn. Save 10% with code Matt Johnson. <laughs> 10% with uh, Matty J. <laughs> oh There's your clip. <laughs> uh, no, it's so, it actually is so cool that there's like resources out there like that. Like, Yeah, I mean, and and that's like when, when you and I were talking about it earlier, like, you know, if you're kind of nerdy about that type of stuff, like, like looking at the panels side by side, it's just astronomical to, to see the amount of stuff that change when you get a blood draw. Um and then like you do these like this strenuous activity and then you get a blood draw right after. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, dude, blokes is blokes is solid. Like Cam Haynes works with blokes. Um, all of these top tier athletes works with them. They send someone directly to your house to draw your blood. Oh wow. Um, yeah. So like literally someone comes in, they're like, Hey, they're going to be there from 7am to 9am. Uh, they walk into your house, they draw your blood within five minutes, they leave. Um, you set up a call with a provider. The provider goes over your blood results and then they send you a customizable stack directly to your door for any deficiencies that you have. So like they sent me like um, turmeric, they sent me ashwagandha, they sent me a men's multivitamin, um, all of these type of things. And they're like, take these and this will, fix your defi- this will fix your deficiency. And then we'll redo your blood draw again in a month and see like what it's corrected. Mm, interesting. It's, yeah, it's solid. That's cool. Yeah, I've been using uh, Ways to Well. They kind of it's basically the same setup. They're local here to Austin, though. Yeah, the founder's been on Rogan a couple of times. You want to give them a plug? Uh, ways to well? No, <laughs> I'm I'm more of like a an ambassador, not really. Yeah. like a no, me, me they don't pay me. Or anything, yeah, no, but. no, I don't know. Blokes doesn't pay me either, so everything I'm saying is completely real. Yeah. Um, I get the blood draw, and and they send me the subs, and um, yeah, it's a phenomenal phenomenal company. Um, Josh and his wife, um, they both run it, and they have uh, blokes and joy. So joy is like the female side of it. So mm. they do the same thing for females as well. Yeah. And I think it's important to note too, even if you feel good and like you don't feel like you need to get blood checked, it's definitely worth it. Because almost I can almost guarantee you there's something that's low that you can optimize. Yeah. I mean, which leads us into me finding out about the hypothyroid, yeah. which is that was something that we talked about where I've done three blood draws now. Blood draw one, it showed my like super low thyroid and they're like, yeah, like, 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 let's just watch that. And then the 24 hours before, low, 24 hours after, low. And they're like, oh, like, hey, we think that that something is, something's up here. What do you do to fix that? So they're just, you know, they're going to readjust my, you know, my smart stack to add some stuff in there to see if they can fix it. Um, and then we're going to do another blood draw later. Uh, if it can't be fixed with supplementation, then I'll probably have to have to go to the doctor. But the biggest thing with them, um, am I wearing the pink hat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the biggest thing with them is... <laughs> Fuck sick care. Fuck sick. Uh, you mean the American healthcare system? <laughs> yes. Yes, the American healthcare system. So the biggest thing with them is, you know, they want to, you know, they want to give you the option to not have to, you know, you shouldn't yeah. have to go to the doctor. Like, like get your blood drawn, get on legit supplements that will help you, right? Because I go to the doctor and they're like, oh, hypothyroid. Let me put you on pill X, Y, and Z. And it might make you depressed. It also might make you throw up and it will kill your sex drive. Like, But they're going to make a bunch of money out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and you also have to pay uh, $750 a month for all of these pills that are literally not going to do a single fucking thing for you. So Blokes is like, no, absolutely not. We're not going to do that. We're going we're gonna to draw your blood. We're going to put you on legit supplements at an affordable cost and fuck the doctor. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, yeah, you should never have to go to the doctor uh, unless you have like you know some genetic ailment or something. Yeah, like if you're, which per- is like like what I said, you know, like like, yeah. like they're they're looking at that. Okay, now let's see if we can fix it with supplementation. If we can't, then I will make my own choice to to, to right. probably have to go to a provider. But step one, what can you change in your diet? Slash, what can you take? You know, natural multivitamin to try to fix it. Yeah, most ailments are did you hear that <laughs> yeah. yo God damn. damn some asmr for yeah, the people wowzers uh yeah yeah most ailments are uh lifestyle i feel like like the vast majority have to just be lifestyle driven yeah lack of exercise yeah. lack of sunshine eat meat eat fruit eat natural foods drink raw milk um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eat good exercise take care of yourself see the sun sweat 
the ground, I don't know, just like get the, get outside, get outside, yeah. do natural things that we were meant to do. Don't be cooped up all day, sitting at a desk, playing video games, drinking Mountain Dew. I'm drinking an energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> we did run 10 miles. We did. Um, you know, I'm, I'll also smoke a cig and throw in a Zen though. So, you know, there's, <laughs> There's definitely, you know, there's levels to this. So 80% of the time I take care of my body. 20% of the time I wreck it. My God. Welcome to the my fucking o- show. My internal overarching question I wanted to have answered during this podcast was, why are you the way that you are? And I feel like we got to the bottom of that. I, I feel like I have a good idea of, why are, is Matt Johnson like this? <laughs> and I feel like I know now. <laughs> there, Yeah. I mean. Mission accomplished. Cool. I don't know what you found out, but I'm glad you did. Yeah. I like it. I got the answer. It's locked in here. People cool. listening, they know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if, you, if you are a unique if specimen. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You are a unique human. I'm going to end it I with love that. that. I but love who that. wants to be average, dude? Fuck average. Yeah. I love that. Dude, thanks for coming on, man. This is fun. Uh, was it everything you hoped and dreamed it would be? Because you only sent me 9 million text messages about the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Uh, once you cut me the check, it'll be it'll be a little bit better. So I appreciate you paying me to be on here. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if I did that, dude. Some people do that. Yeah, uh, I actually I had a uh, I had someone I got a message from a podcast uh, that was based out of uh, Las Vegas. I'd have to do like a word search in my Instagram DMs, but it's like, hey, this is so and so, Sean's assistant. Sean would love to have you on the show. Um, blah 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 blah. Uh, are you interested? And I'm like, yeah, sure. They're like, all right, like we only do in person in Vegas. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, you know, let's do it. I went and I looked at the show and it has like 4 million Instagram followers. Uh, remind me, I'll show you after this. And I'm like, cool. Like, you know, she's like, all right, like I'm going to send you over the Google Doc, um, you know, fill it out and then uh, we'll schedule a time. Cool. So I get into a Google Doc. I fill it all the way out. I get down to the bottom. The very last question says, there is a $7,500 non refundable fee to be on the podcast. What the? So you, what? as a guest, have to pay $7,500 to come on his podcast. So then I went and I looked and I see like Danica Patrick was on his podcast. Uh, Howie Mandel was on his podcast. Um, and I'm like, yo, like these people paid $7,500 to go on this podcast. That's insane. Yeah. Like like throwing it the other way around. Like I said, you paid me to be here. But like <laughs> someone paying to go talk on a podcast that's so wild blows my mind i messaged back i was like you tell sean he can fuck off yeah did you actually say that no <laughs> no i messaged i messaged back and like literally i like didn't even send the google doc back and i messaged back and i said i said you're trying to tell me that i have to pay seventy five hundred dollars to come on a fucking podcast and i never what heard a that. shitty way to make money i never heard that <laughs> That's so crazy. Amanda's dude. like, I can't believe you said that. I'm like, I can't believe that they thought I was going, me of all people. Yeah. Like, do you think that they looked at my profile and they're like, yeah, this guy definitely has $7,500 to pay for a podcast? I'm like, bro, like, what? Those can't be good conversations. No. I mean, if you just let anybody pay to be on your show, like, what's it? Whereas there's no interest yeah, or curiosity. Yeah. yeah. It's. It's crazy. I'll, I'll, I, I can't wait to show you. Yeah. Uh, Pierce was telling me, I shouldn't say too much, maybe. But him and Steve were. I shouldn't say it. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Hey, Missy, we're friends. Yeah, they're friends. Good friends. <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> cool. Um, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. That's not what this. Yeah, is that was like what we were talking about earlier. I don't even know if we were recording, and you're like, "Yeah, so who got it for you?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, next. <laughs> yeah, internet's a weird place, man. Yeah. Um, where's the best place for people to connect with you? Uh, right now is going to be on Instagram um, at Matt Johnson with two underscores soon to be on YouTube leading into the lead challenge and the run across Texas. So you can find us on YouTube. Um, yeah. Other than that, not a bunch of places right now. Um, just trying to figure it out with all this new craziness going on. Beautiful. That fresh hundred K followers. <sighs> I guess your man. whole self worth should be dependent upon how many followers you have. By oh the yeah, way. yeah. I mean, for <laughs> sure, bro. <laughs> I, you know, you know, I, I like, I always had it in my mind of like, you know, the hundred k. To it's just not real to me right now. You know, like, like it's, like it happened, and I'm like, and I'm like expecting everything to change and like a mansion to just pop up and yep. <laughs> and you know I'm driving a Lambo with you know seven girlfriends and and. I'm like, oh, 
Now I'm at 104,000 and everything's still the same. Yeah. Like this is, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. Dude. I kind of had the same mindset too. When, yeah. I, when I was approaching that and it's like, it's, it's the same thing. Instagram shit. Yeah. Instagram shit, but we are the shit within the shit. Yeah. It's, I mean, as cliche as it is, it's literally a number. Yeah. It doesn't like, mean I mean, like, are you still a good person? <laughs> yeah. Pe- people put way too much value on it. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I know I know so many quality people out there that have a thousand followers. Yeah. Like 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 look at Adrian McDonald. Adrian McDonald won the Leadville one hundred and he has like three thousand followers. Yeah. Like like dude is way better than you and I'll probably ever be. Yeah. yeah. Dude is way better than you and I will ever be. Yeah. And he's got nothing. It's wild. Anyways, this is fun, dude. Let's go uh deadlift. Are we gonna pull four hundred today? Four oh five? No. Why not? I don't even. I I, I have would, a deadlift bar. I would be. I, I we'll see what'll happen. I would be surprised with a three fifty pulled today. I'll give you some pointers. Yeah. 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 I'll yeah, teach yeah. you everything, That's what, dude. I tell everyone that. Uh, I can deadlift a fuck ton of weight, but my form is ass. And don't. <laughs> and if you're out there and you see any of my videos, do not come after me about my running form, my lifting form. My form is trash. Like like on that on that reel that went huge for like three mil. Um, people were coming at me and were like, if I ever run like this guy, shoot me. <laughs> and I'm like, dog, I'm not giving out form tips here. Like, <laughs> like sorry. <laughs> but I will say, yeah, running. I Doesn't mean, Zach Bitter have like a terrible form as well? Uh, I don't know. I think he does. I don't see a video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has like hundred mile world record. So yeah, I mean, that, well that, but that, that's where I was going is like, I was like, I think, I think I've seen him run before and I'm like, yeah, like his form is, is garbage as well. Yeah. Um, hundred mile American and he's, record. And he's the hundred mile. Yeah, yeah. He's the hundred mile American world record holder. Yeah, American world record. American. Put the stamp on it. American. Fuck yeah. <laughs> End it there. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't get either one of us canceled. I don't think we said anything too bad. Should no, I mean, I mean, you better cut the mic now because I can say some crazy shit. All right, we'll end it there. Thanks for coming on, dude. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a review, and share it with a friend. We'll see you in the next one.